Welcome everybody to 24 Hours of Pass uh, Summit Preview 2015. We are really excited you could join us today for Pinal Dave's session, Seven Tips to Performance Tuning, Optimization, and Everything. This 24 Hours of Pass event consists of 24 consecutive live web, uh, webcasts delivered by expert speakers from the Pass community. Uh, this session that Dave is giving Pinal Dave is giving is a preview of one of many technical sessions that will be presented at PASS Summit this year in October. And the recordings of these sessions will all be available in one week at uh, www.24hoursofpass.com. My name is Mindy Kernut. Uh, I am a SQL MVP. I've been working with SQL Server for over 20 years. And uh, I have a few quick introduction slides before I hand you over to the reins of Pinal Dave. He's going to speak for 40 to 45 minutes, and then we will move on to the Q&A where you can ask him some questions that you may have uh, based on the session that he gives. So, uh, Pinal, next slide, please. Okay, so... Uh, if you have any questions or if you are experiencing any issues, just type in your question into the pane on the GoToWebinar control panel and someone will help you. Feel free to enter your questions in the Q&A field at any time. Uh, once we get to the Q&A portion of the session, which will be at the end of the session, I'll read off your questions to the speaker. Uh, since all of the attendees are muted, you will only be able to submit questions by typing into that Q&A field. Uh, there will be a short evaluation at the end of the session. And we really appreciate your feedback. It's important to us. So if you could take just a minute to complete it, uh, it'll appear in your web browser. Uh, next slide. 24 hours of pass wouldn't be possible without the support and dedication of our sponsors. They're the reason this event is available to you free of charge. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank our presenting sponsors, Microsoft, Dell, uh, Software, and Idera. And in addition, I'd like to thank our supporting sponsors for this event, uh, Hewlett Packard, SQL Sentry, and Pyramid Analytics. Next slide, please. Next, I'd like to bring your attention to the upcoming PASS Summit taking place in Seattle, Washington this year from October 27th to the 30th. PASS Summit 2015 will feature over 200 sessions uh, with world-class SQL Server experts. Planned and presented by the SQL Server community for the SQL Server community, PASS is single-handedly the largest gathering of SQL Server and BI professionals in the world. We have more than 5,000 registrants coming from all over the world. PASS Summit is also a great place to network and to meet face-to-face -face with experts, peers, and MVPs. More importantly, PASS delivers on providing you with the answers to your SQL Server issues along with the knowledge strategies and skills you need to stay ahead of the curve. You can save $200 right now by registering using the discount code 24HOP15 when you register. Uh, optimize your savings by registering before the end of Sunday, September 20th. To find out more about the PASS Summit, you can go to www.passsummit.com. Next slide. Make sure that you explore everything that PASS has to offer for data professionals. You can join user groups, local user groups, uh, virtual chapters. Uh, there are tons of free online resources through our Learning Center, and you can read up on the latest community news in the Connector newsletter. For those of you who are interested in business analytics, check out the PASS Business Analytics Conference, which happens in May. You can visit www passbaconference.com for more information or to, to subscribe to our bi-weekly BA Insights newsletter. Next slide, please. And now, please let me introduce the speaker of the hour, Pinal Dave. All right, so hello all. Uh, I welcome to you. Thank you very much, Mindy, for introduction. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Technology is wonderful. Every single time, it makes me wonder that we are so uh, uh, sitting different places and we are still talking to each other and we are still connected to each other. And um, it's really wonderful. And I'm so delighted that thanks to PASS that I'm able to talk to you today. 
So today we are going to talk about seven tips to performance tuning, optimization and everything. So I will have a little bit of performance, little bit of optimization and some of the tips which will be like little different which you might have not seen it, maybe you will use it or maybe you will not use it. So with this, uh, let's start. So here it is, this is a, uh, uh, my pre-con which I'm going to present at SQL Pass and this is a sampling of the data. In SQL Pass, I'm going to cover 42 of different tips, but today we are going to see seven of those tips. And here are the seven tips. And the way the seven tips are organized is that there is no really a label to it. Some tips you may find, hey, it's very simple. I have seen it before. And some tip you will just see and say, you know what? I, I think I didn't know this thing. Or, hey, this is pretty new to me, and I should be using it. Okay, is we are going to cover seven tips in next uh, a few minutes. Uh, we will be not going in too much depth of it, but what we are going to do is that we are definitely going to understand what this particular SQL script or SQL tips will do, how it will impact the performance of your database server or a query, and how you can use it in your daily life. So we will see and understand the important part of this deep SQL tips. Well, uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar with Pareto's principle, isn't it? The Pareto's principle says, for many events, roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. Well, that's very much true for our own session as well when we are talking about SQL Server. For many queries, roughly 80% of the performance comes from 20% of the performance picks. So, Pareto's rule is always true and we are only going to focus on 20% of the part where we are going to get performance. Well, with this, I think let's start. Let's start with our very first script. So here is the very first step. Cover indexes. Do you guys all use cover indexes? I'm sure many of you right away say, yes, we do use the cover indexes. So here is the question. What do you do in a cover indexes? How does it, it impacts your queries? What is the advantage of keyword included? Now, this is a pretty simple tip, and I'm going to start with something simple which we all of us know. If you know this tip, well, that's fantastic because this will give you a revision, and if you don't know tip, then you will definitely learn. So it's always a good idea to use cover indexes, but make sure you use them into included keyword. Now, this is the tip, but let's see them into action because we can read all day long. We can see PowerPoint as much as we want, but unless and until we see anything into action, it's so hard to put them into our understanding. So let's start with our very first tip, and now I will go to SQL Server Management Studio, and here I am. So here is the very first tip. I'm going to use Sample Database AdventureWorks. And I'm sure all of you know AdventureWorks, right? Well, use AdventureWorks. So I change the database con uh, context of my particular query to AdventureWorks. And here is a sample query. Let me execute the query. And here is the result set. This is straightforward, nothing fancy about it. Now we will go and enable the actual execution plan over here. I enable actual execution plan by clicking this little button over here and this will show me execution plan when I execute this query. Now I click on execute again and you will see a extra tab over here which shows us execution plan. Execution plan has cluster index scan and parallelism. Now here is my question to you. Is this query good or bad? Just think about it in your mind or just take a piece of paper or open a notebook and notepad on your computer and just write it down. See what happens usually I notice it that when I ask people to keep anything in the mind, they do keep in the mind. But when we see the result or when we uh, discover the answer at that particular time, people usually change their answer and say, yeah, well, that's what I meant. But if you write it down, I'm sure that um, you will figure it out if you are right or wrong. I assume a lot of people will get this one right because this is the simple one, this is the starting one. As we go a little further, the question will be difficult and we'll have something more interesting to see. 
So write it down if the square is good or bad. Well, the answer is here. The answer is that most of the time, the cluster index scan, when you see a scan, is not good. Now, right away, three people are, I'm sure, might be saying, well, but if there is a small result set, it's good. Remember, I'm going to talk about something which is more generic. Remember the Pareto's row? We are not going to talk about special case today. We are going to talk about something which is very, very generic or something happens in a most of the cases. As time is limited, we want to go through a few things, so we'll only talk about generic cases. And definitely I agree, if the result set is smaller, then scan is good. But in that case, do we really care about performance? Because performance may not matter if our original result set is very, very small. So let's assume that our result set is very, very big. That means this particular query is not up to the mark as we see a scan operation over here. Now, let's go back to our editor and let's try to create an index. Now, if you notice it, we have a unit price over here and we can just create index on this particular column of unit price. However, if we create index on this unit price, this is not going to do good for this particular query because there are a lot of other things already available. Now, let's go back to our execution plan. Right click over here and let's see what was particular object used. Here is the object. When you see this particular object, that means this particular index of sales order detail, sales order ID, and sales order detail ID was used for retrieving the data of this query. That has created the scan. Now, I have checked the, this particular index before we start the session, and it includes these three columns. Even though these three columns are used, our query is giving us scan. Let's create uh, another index where First, we will observe where close, and whatever col column which we have in a where close, we will move it to our first part where we are going to write a key for the index, which is create non-cluster index, name of the index, and right after that, we have table name, and over here, I have specified whatever column I have in my where close. Next, I will use column included, and over here, I will write it down everything which I have in my select statement. This is called use of included keyword where we write whatever we have in our select close over here. This makes this a very good cover index. Here is my challenge to you. You may think this is a very simple tip I'm showing you, but I want you to go back and check your database. I want you to go and see which uh, database of yours where you have used included. There are chances that not many of the tables you are, you are using this included column. In usual case, when people want to create and cover index, what they will do is that they will write all this column over here. They will not use this included keyword. This is also a cover index. Then why, why should you not use this? The reason you should not use this is this will have now, all this column which you see as a part of your index B3. That will make your index a little bit more wide than you need and also will create a little fat index. Again, this is my own word which I've created called fat index, which is it's a little wider and not many queries will be benefited from this particular index as there are so many different columns in the index. The good idea would be to just create index where you are using included and this all the columns which you have used in included will not be part of your index B3 but they will be stored as a lift level, lift level and that will be more impactful and more efficient for your query. Now let's create this particular index and now let's run this query one more time. We will go to our execution plan, and here it is. Our index scan is now converted to index sick. That's it. That was a very simple first step, and I'm very sure that most of you know about this one. Now, let's jump to our next step, which is a little bit 
advanced, but many of you will still know it. Functions and performance. How does functions affect the performance? Here is the question to you. Have you ever used date or any other function in your where clause? Do you know what is this impact on your query? Well, write it down. Functions are not good in your where clause. Functions reduces the performance and it also ignores the indexes which you have created in your table. Here is the next step. Function and indexes again. How do you avoid the bad performance of the function with the help of indexes? For that, we have to use a calculated column. Well, tip 9 and tip 10, both are little bit related. Both are talking about functions and both are talking about indexes. In simple word, both are saying, if you use functions in your where clause, for example, if you have to find ever anybody who is born in the month of February, will you use function in your where clause or not? Or if you have to figure it out that today, which day of the month is Monday or Tuesday, will you use function in your where clause or not? Well, pretty much there are many scenarios where you will have to use function in your where clause and that's not good, then how do we avoid that situation? Well, let's see that next in demo where we will see tip 9 and 10 together. After these two tips, I think we'll take a little bit more advanced topic because I think we have enough warm up and we have understood that how performance works. We'll talk about delayed durability and in-memory and little bit of spatial database later on in this session. So here we are where we are going to talk about functions and performance. First I will create a very simple table which I like to call as QDF effect. Here is the table created. The reason I call it very simple table because it has four columns ID, first name, last name and CD and if you look at it all four of them are varchar 100. The last column is create date time with data type of date time. I have just created this table and now I will insert 100,000 row in it. The data is random but one thing I would like to call your attention is here, it, here I have Seattle and here I also have Seattle. However, in this scenario there is empty space before and after Seattle. Even the word is same the string is actually not the same. They are different. So for SQL Server, this Seattle and this Seattle is two different cities. Now let's execute the script and next I will create index on column ID. I'm creating a cluster index on column ID. ID is an incrementing value over here because I've used row ID. Now, this is done. Next is where our demo starts. So once again, I will go and enable execution plan by enabling this button or by clicking this button. Here is my first query. The query is very simple. I want to find few data where this particular condition is correct. Let's execute the script and see the output. Currently, there are 166 rows. When I go and check execution plan, there are cluster index scan. Now, here is the same question to you back. Is it good or bad? Well, as I said, in most of the cases, scan is not good and if we can avoid, we should avoid it. There are special cases when scan works great and we should be using that. So, next, we will create index. First index I have created was cluster index and next I'm going to create a non-cluster index. This time I'm going to create index on create date time because create date time I have used in where condition of this query. Remember, uh, remember what is my goal? My goal is very simple. I need to create an index on table UDF effect where I do not see a scan when I execute this query but I will see 
a seek. For that, I can do many things, but I'm going to create a covering index. Remember, in a previous demonstration, when I created a cover index, what happened? Well, our result was very simple. In previous example, wherever we had scan, we were able to convert that to seek with the help of cover index. I will create similar cover index one more time. Here is create date time in our where clause. I will use that over here. Next, I will observe what I have in my select statement. In my select statement, I have create date time. Well, that column is already covered here. Next, I have CD. Let me put that into my included column. And the third one is ID. Now remember, I'm not going to include ID over here. The reason is very simple. ID I have already used in cluster index. You can see that over here. The date create date time is already over here. And the one column city now I'm using in included. The reason I do not have to use ID over here because when I create non-cluster index at that time it will automatically include my cluster index as a pointer. So as I have already created this cluster index on column ID, my column ID is automatically included over here. Now I will select this statement and execute. Let's go back and now execute this statement. Even though I've written over here, scan again, I have a question for you. Do you really think this will happen or my scan will be converted to seek? Think about it for a minute. Because previously, in earlier example, when I created a cover index, it has converted my scan to sick. Do you think it's going to repeat now or not? Well, let's check it out by executing this statement and clicking on execution plan. No, nope, didn't happen. What I just taught you in earlier example is no more true now. What happened? Did I teach you anything wrong? Not at all. Cover index do work and we have seen that. And now why it's not working? Simple reason which you already know. They are not working because we have function on the column create date. How we can fix that? Well, fix it is just here. I did something simple. We don't have to use this kind of function. Sometimes we can rewrite the query and that is the thing which we need to do. If we can rewrite any query where we can remove the function, we should do that. Here I have understood this logic and he wrote this query that I can easily make this simple and convert that to this simple query. Now do I have a function on a where clause? I do have a function on a where clause. Do you think it's going to adversely impact this particular query? Most probably no because even though I have function in my where clause, I'm not applying this particular function on any of the column so that means over here, even though I have function, the logic is much more simplified. When I execute this statement and see execution plan, I can clearly see there is an index sick. I have converted scan to six by just converting function in different format. What I did is that I simplified this particular where condition to this logic and now my simplify logic has converted scan to seek. That was that simple. But not always you can simplify your logic in your where clause. You sometimes have to do different thing. And that's what we are going to see next. Here is the same table I'm going and here is my query. Let's execute this statement and see what do I get in my execution plan? My execution plan says index scan. What I'm doing in this query is retrieving data from UDF effect table with function left on city column. Here I'm taking first four letters of Seattle city. Now I will once again execute the single second statement. Here I have removed create date 
from the select statement. Let's see how much data we get. We still get same 166 row. But when we see execution plan, well, there is no difference because we just removed a column from select statement and it has not done any impact on this query. That's fine. Now, this is what we understood and we'll use this understanding later on when we go down in this query. Now, let's create a covering index. What will be the covering index in this scenario? Hmm, I think it should be very easy for you. I suggest you write it down on a notepad. Well, I think when you look at it, you can just create a covering index on column CD because CD is used over here in where close and CD is also used in select statement. That means CD, which is used two times, is now part of our index over here. And we do not have to include ID because we have already created cluster index on column ID. Now I am executing the statement and let's see what will happen in this scenario. I am sure from previous example you might have guessed now that it's going to give us can and yes it is still can because even though we created a cover index it's not going to matter because we have used function left on column city and that's not good. We need to do something better. We need to come up with a different scenario. Now let's see if we can do something like this. Select ID, city, create date from UDF city where city is like CRT and percentage. Let's see what's the answer of this query. Well, hmm, here I got index sick, but then there is again key lookup. This is also not good. We just want index sick. When key lookup happens, our query goes back to original cluster index to get necessary data from this query. That's why there is a key lookup on IXUDF effect ID, which is nothing but our cluster index. And you can see that mentioned over here. This is, again, not a great solution. What should we do? Our query rewrite is not working right now. Well, here is what you can do. Let's create something new. Let's be a little creative. Let's create index over here where we are going to do something very simple. I'm going to use CD as a part of index as usual. But now I will take create index and put it in included column. I'm sure you might have understand, understood now that why I'm doing this. The reason I'm doing this is because I have CD in my where clause, but create date time is in my select statement. If I include them over here, they are going to help me out. Now, ID, I do not have to include because it's part of cluster index. Next, I will create this index. And right after that, I will execute this statement. Pay attention to result set. We now have a index stake. We have learned that we can effectively use cover index or covering index on any of the query and optimize Scan to sick. If you ever see a key lookup, it's not good. See if you can mix two or three of different skills and convert sick, convert scan to sick and remove key lookup if it exists. Here I've done two things. First, what did I do? I rewrote my query. Remember, I still have 166 rows. I rewrote my query and I removed left function. See, if you use a function, it's not good on column. I removed that function, and I have simulated the same logic with the help of like column. A lot of people will say like is not good, like doesn't give you performance, and this kind of advice, when we hear, our mind gets really, really uh, filled up with this information. Well, like may not be good in certain cases, but if you be a little creative, if you understand how things work, they sometimes help, help you out. And here is the good example where like, really worked out with the help of cover indexes and now I do not have a key lookup and my queries are running much faster. Well, that's for it, but let's take this example a little bit more forward. Now, let me execute this statement. Select ID and city from UDF where city is equal to Seattle. 
the answer is 166 rows which you know now if somebody asks you well you really do not care about spaces you just want to retrieve every single place where city name is Seattle remember my earlier case little bit above I have Seattle over here and Seattle over here both of them are same for me but for SQL Server they are different how to handle this situation this is a classic case where you would use two function on the top of it one is R trim and second one is left trim which will remove uh, trailing and for uh, leading spaces before CD and now when you execute this you can see you get result set with 180 rows and in the result set also you can clearly see there are few columns where there is additional space before now this may be a correct result but when we see the execution plan what we have we have index scan that doesn't work out we don't want to see index scan for this session as I said it may be good for some time but not today what happens if I rewrite this query and take R trim and left trim from city and move them on a the right side right above Seattle do you think it's gonna work out well let's execute this and here is my result there is only 166 rows when you see this result you can clearly see this does not include the rows that means our query is not complete there are a set of rows where Seattle exists didn't show up how you can fix it what should you do there are something you can do which will make this query gives you correct answer and good performance for that you just have to add a computed column here I'm adding a new column a computed column called city trim and I have right trim and left trim on the column city now do you think this will fix the problem to check that first I have created the computed column and next I am going to execute this particular script now guess write it down on your notepad do you think we will get correct answer do you think we will get better performance with seek there are two questions and now if you've done with writing down let's execute the script first we are able to see 180 rows that means our answer is correct but do we get scan or seek well here we get scan that's not good so even though our answer is correct our result set is suboptimal we want to see sick not the scan what should we do well there is one thing you can do you can create one more non cluster index over here where you use one of the column as a computed column I'm using city trim over here and now I'm executing this statement now my new index is created where I have used city trim city trim which was used in this where clause and city dream is a computed column now I have created this index let's see what happens when you see the execution plan you can see now we have index sick this is good we wanted this we always wanted this and we also wanted to make make sure that we are retrieving 180 rows this is double good or is there any word like that but there are good and good we got two right answer well now that's computed how does this computed column helps performance we have seen this if you use city trim and you use com you compare it with Seattle it gives you performance but here is my question to you I mean if you were thinking so far we are going little easy here is my question to you and let me see if you can get the right answer here I have used city trim and that's why when I execute this column or when I execute this query it was giving me better performance this is fine because I've just created index on CT trim remember my original query where I use R trim and left trim it was do giving me scan remember it was giving me scan now here is my question to you when I execute this query again will I get scan or will I get sick remember there is no index which helped over here hence we have to go all the way to computed column and creating index on it can you answer that question I give you a moment why I select the statement and execute it when I look at 
answer over here there are 180 rows but question is that will it give me seek or scan here is the answer I still got an index seek remember my original problem where I use art rim and left rim and I was getting scan this time I got a seek how come which index did it use well the index which it has used is IX UDF effect CT trim this teaches us something a very important lesson that even though we have not used our computed column in our query the index which was created on a computed column was the best fit for this query our query was not on a computed column still SQL Server engine use the index created on a computed column this is fantastic SQL Server engine knows what to do that's why we are suggesting that don't force indexes if you don't have to and it is also equally true that don't create too many indexes let's drop this and we are done now let's jump to our next step auto statistics should we keep it on or should we keep it off please tell me this answer because I know half of you are saying on and half of you are saying no off what is the right answer what should I do I need only one answer and there are two things either I can keep it on then or either I can keep it off if I have if I'm supposed to keep it on then why there is an option to turn it off and if I'm supposed to keep it off why there is an option to keep it on this is a always asked question to answer this will take help of SQL Server Management Studio and very quick script which I'm going to show you next first I'm going to create two databases one of the database name is status on and second database is called status off once I create these two databases next I will create statistics situation on them one of them will have auto create statistics and auto update statistics as on now that's done and next one will have auto create and auto update statistics off once this is done now I'm in a situation where I have two databases status on and status off Excuse me. status on has auto create statistics on and status off has auto create statistics off now I will create a sample table and create sample indexes in one of the database similar process I will repeat in second database now I have two identical database and one of them has statistic on and another one has statistic off let me populate same data in both of them now here is the question for you which one of this query will run faster look at this two identical database two identical tables in identical database and same kind of data populated in those table there is only one difference in both of this database one of them has statistic on and another one has statistic off here is question for you when I execute this particular query what do you think will happen I give you a moment to think and write it down the question is that which one of this will be optimal well now let's select the statement and click on execute let's go back to execution plan and see which one has given us better performance here it is answer is evident in execution plan we can clearly clearly see that where we have kept statistics on we are getting better performance because this particular query is only taking 37 percent cost compared to the entire batch the second query is taking 63 percent of resources that means this particular query is not optimal whereas this particular query is doing amazing also we can see the evil scan shows up over here and over here we are just fine there is a sick 
There is definitely QLOOKUP, but not so bad as the scan. The scan is really, really evil, and there is a small little sign over here. Let's see what this sign reads out. The sign is nothing but a warning, and the warning is in our face. The warning is columns with no statistics. That means we did not create statistics on these columns which we are using in this query. SQL Server is telling us that we should keep statistics on. What should we do? Well, here is my advice. Advice is very simple. If you are using OLTP or if your workload is in OLTP nature where you do insert and then immediately select, you insert, select, insert, select, or this kind of operation, that's OLTP database. At that particular time, in your transaction database, your queries are very important and your data set underlying is changing. You should just keep auto statistic on. And this is true for 80% of the database. I'm sure few of you will say, not in my case. Well, not in your case then. But this is a generic advice. If you have OLTP database, mostly keeping auto statistic on will be good. Now, there is another argument. Well, what happens if there is a lot of insert, update, delete happens? Should I keep auto statistic on because it will create disk activity? My answer is yes, because now we have SSD and now we have so much improvement in a SQL Server that keeping auto statistics will generate some of the I/O activity, but it's not so bad. In my experience, in my 13 year of experience, I have seen this is just working fine. But if you have that special case where by just keeping auto statistic on, you are getting I/O stalling, just keep it off. The off option is for all of them where there is a unique problem. Otherwise, on will just do good. For data warehousing solution, so most of the time, off or on, either of them doesn't create much of the impact. Keep it off if you prefer. Now, let's go to the one of the feature, delayed durability. My question to all of you, how many of you use delayed durability? Do you use this feature in your production server? If you're not using it, why are you not using it? I know the standard answer which you'll give me that, well, you cannot compromise your data integrity, data durability, because SQL Server is S following ACID standard, D stands for durability, and you cannot compromise that. That's why you selected SQL Server. Fair game. Very well said. Don't use delayed durability. It is a bad feature if you are really, really care, caring about your data durability. But once in a while, your data durability may not be that important, and you think, you may want to use uh, this advanced feature where you get better performance. You should use this. Let's see how direct durability impacts performance. Remember, I already give you a disclaimer. Don't use it if you are so much uh, behind your durability. You just want durability, just don't enable it. But if you don't want it and see performance, go for it. And now I will create this database where I have uh, used master database and the name of the database is delayed durability. Now execute the statement and it will take a little bit time because I gave initial size to a little bit more. Once this database is created, the next thing we will just take immediately backup of it uh, to this null. Uh, to make sure the backup and log and everything starts, uh, log started to write. Otherwise, sometimes this, or not sometimes, most of the time this feature will not work. Now, I have to set up delayed durability on a database level. And for that, I will execute this particular statement. You can check delayed, delayed durability status by executing this statement. You can see for this database, the durability is set to delayed by having this one one and next we will create a dummy table in this database now I've created this dummy table and next we will do a very cool thing I'm going to create two store procedure this is a normal store procedure where in dummy table I will insert 100,000 row right before over here, I have counter. 
this counter will measure that how long will it take for this stored procedure to execute. That means at the end of execution of this stored procedure, we will know how much time this stored procedure has taken to execute. Next, I will create another stored procedure. And in this stored procedure, I will change one thing. And that one thing is this, this particular statement. That means when the commit happens of inserting data into this dummy table, it will use feature of delayed durability. Now when I execute this stored procedure, it is exactly same as the first stored procedure, but there is one difference. And that difference is this particular line. Now, here we have both of these stored procedures together. Let's execute both of these stored procedures one after another and see how long they take. They are still executing. Let's see. Let's see. 11 seconds. And here it is. Our first stored procedure took 13 seconds. And our second stored procedure took just 2 seconds. What does it mean? The query which took 13 seconds was our normal stored procedure where we cared about durability. And in the second stored procedure, there was a delayed durability. What it has done actually under the hood is it has delayed writing data from cache to hard drive. It has just delayed the entire thing. And it will eventually harden the data, but a little bit delayed. Between this time, if there is power issue or something wrong happens, you might have want to forget what you have done with your data. That's the risk. But if you are OK with a little bit risk, you will get amazing performance. You can see 13 seconds versus 2 seconds. Now here is my question. In the first query, I inserted 100,000 row. And in the second, I also inserted 100,000 row. How many total rows will be in this table? Because in the second case, we had delayed durability. Mm -hmm. Question is that, will our table will have 100,000 or 200,000? Because in this case, we are delaying. Let's check that out very quickly by executing this. Well, there are 200,000 row. Remember, it is delayed, delay, do, sorry, it is delayed durability. It's not never doing durability. It's a little bit delayed by microseconds. So it's OK sometime. Remember, this feature is very, very powerful if you are a little bit flexible with your durability. Now, this reaches, uh, we reach to a second last tip of us, and we are five minutes uh, down before we have to finish the session. So we are doing just fine. In next five minutes, we'll see two cool trips. This is in-memory database table. So I'm very sure many of you did not use delayed durability because you just like thought we should not be using it or this particular feature was compromising your data durability. Are you using in-memory database tables? Yes or no? Why are you not using it? What makes you not use it? I know there is a list of things you can't do. Hey, you cannot do uh, like can't create indexes on it or you cannot use foreign key on it and all these things you will tell me now. I agree with you. There are a few limitations of in-memory database right now. But it's not really that bad if you can just leave around those workaround, and that's why we call it workaround, right? When you can just a little bit work around, you can definitely do a good job with in-memory database. And remember, SQL Server 2016 coming up with lot of advancement with in-memory database. You can create um, indexes, you can um, store different kind of data type. Well, Blob maybe not supported still. But again, I don't want to talk about 2016 now, but 2016 is going to come up with a lot of feature. But even in 2014, this feature works out very well. Here, I'm creating a database which is in, in memory, and I can do that by ex writing, oops, it's changed, change. I can do that by specifying on primary in this particular name and file group, and I specify contains memory optimized data. This makes it in memory database. Now what I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to create the same thing. I'm going to create 
a dummy table on this database and right after that I will create another dummy table called dummy table memory for in memory database remember for in memory database there is a special syntax little bit work you might have to do to remember that you have to specify special keywords like this once you do this kind of keywords it's pretty set see I don't remember them too I go to my own blog or go to MSD and, and, and just copy paste this particular one because that just works who wants to remember the syntax as long as you understand everything behind the scene understand the concept but syntax you don't have to memorize you can just copy paste and that's fine now I'm creating two different stored procedure first where I'm inserting data on a dummy table and in the second stored procedure I am inserting data into dummy table memory well that's it I created two stored procedures and let's see what I have in this two table both of them currently have zero rows now I will execute this stored procedure and what does this stored procedure do they just take count the time how long it took to execute this stored procedure now I have executed the stored procedure let's see what's the output and how long it take to give us result both of these stored procedure are inserting 100,000 row and our normal stored procedure took 12 seconds of the time it's really lot and our in memory stored procedure took zero second what which is better trust me in memory is very powerful if you, if you can live with little bit work around and if you can figure it out your in memory stored procedure and database is really powerful feature and end result is the same both the cases both the time you have 100,000 row inserted isn't that cool it's the same thing see if you can use this new feature of SQL server and uh, and it works we have covered we talked about cover index a feature which exists forever in earlier version of SQL server and we move down to functions we talked about statistics then we talked about little bit about durability with a feature of delayed durability and in memory database right now there is one last feature we will talk in next two minutes and that is geometry data types this is very very interesting thing and without talking about this slide because this slides you will be able to download afterwards you can do that so what we will do we'll see a demo demo is going to be very very powerful and in next two minutes we'll be able to cover that here is special line string demo when I just create this long 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 stored procedure what do you guys think how long this query will take to just execute this well uh, it's nobody's guess so hard to figure it out but you can see by to just create this stored procedure or just to create this particular shape SQL server has to work for a long time it took us almost 18 seconds look at this it took us almost 18 seconds to do this what happens if I execute again trust me it's gonna take another 18 seconds it's gonna take forever to just do that the reason is that that's one issue with SQL Server when it has to draw a shape of ge geometry type well how can we fix it well you can fix it with the help of trace flag trace flag T6534 you can use this one this particular trace flag and get immediate performance do you want to see that well we still have a minute and the second time when I run this query it took 17 seconds now what I will do is I will restart my SQL server here it is first I will stop the service next I am restarting my SQL server services with this stress flag and let's see what happens well service is starting now service has started let's execute this query one more time right are you guys ready let's see how long it take because now I have only 30 seconds left to end this session and I oh that's done it took zero second this time let me execute one more time zero 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 so there are 
main red flag in SQL Server which sometimes helps your performance. If you deal with geometry data type, I suggest you enable this particular red flag because it gives you instant performance to you. Now let's go back and disable this and see what happens. Well, I'm stopping SQL Server again and I'm starting again but this time remember there is no trace flag over here. Come back to SQL Server Management Studio once again back to long time. Well, that's it. So sometimes stress flags are very, very helpful. I suggest you go to SQL Server MSDN and check and see what are the different stress flags available and what they can do. There are going to be many different tips and many things. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me and I will be happy to address that. Over to you, I Mindy. Okay, uh, hopefully you can all hear me. So we have a bunch of questions. I'm going to uh, try to get to a couple of them in the time that we have left. The first question is from Sandra Casas. Kasa so I hope I said that correctly. Is it recommended to use the auto update statistics asynchronously feature? That's very true. That's uh, one of the tip in my uh, pre-con uh, pre when we are going to finish this. That's a good one. Asynchronous um, update is also very, very powerful and it does very similar thing like delayed durability but for statistics. So there is no issue about durability of database but little issue of durability of statistics and which we can live with because it's not going to be off. A great suggestion. Another question just came in from um, Matt Penny while you were doing this last bit. Are there any disadvantages or trade-offs with using trace flag T6534 and one other person also said is this a documented trace flag? Uh, okay, so I have a, one answer is if it is documented, well, I, I'm i not sure if it's documented or not because I definitely found from internet, but I talked to a couple of my friends uh, who, who understand this test flag very well in and out, I can't say the names, and they say there are no disadvantage to use this particular flags, and um, this is perfectly safe to use that, but are they documented? Well, the official answer is that all the test flag um, enable it if you need it. If you don't need it, just leave the SQL Server as it is because that's how they have built it. When you enable trace flag, it gives you a different um, kind of behavior. So don't enable unless you really, really need it. As I, as I said, I don't know if it is documented or not. Is it safe? As I, I know my friends who know this very well said, this is perfectly safe to use it. But again, use it with little bit discretion. Talk to, to your admin. Great. And question from Stephanie Patterson. If you create an index for every scenario to avoid key lookups, isn't there an impact on the server by having too many indexes? Correct. That's a very, very true. That's why one of the disclaimer I said, be very, very sure that you don't create too many indexes. Um, and uh, that's really, really bad. You want to create only five or maximum of seven indexes on a table. And how can you figure it out? Which are the indexes I should create? That's why there are other tips like you can go to missing index, you can do the impact analysis, sometimes the third party vendors also can help you out and some, and the best thing is that you can just keep the statistics of the various indexes, how they are used, how many are you use and at the end you figure it out at, uh, from various DMVs that which are the indexes you want to keep. Keep it five to seven, you can't please everybody, you can't create too many indexes and that's, that's indexing session, very, very true. Um, as we were sampling only seven of the tips, we were just uh, we just had a disclaimer of this one, and we didn't see the actual demo of creating too many indexes are bad. Great. Okay, we are out of time. I'm sorry for everyone who didn't get there were a bunch of questions, but that was all we have time to get to. Thank you for attending Seven Tips to Performance Tuning Optimization and Everything. Um, I'd like to thank Pinal for his time and his expertise, and again, I'd like to also thank our presenting sponsors, Microsoft, Idera, and Dell Software, and our supporting sponsors, Pyramid Analytics, SQL Sentry, and Hewlett Packard. I hope you have enjoyed this session as much as I did. You can follow along on social media using the at pass24hop uh, tag on Twitter and share your thoughts and event with the hashtags pound pass 24 hop and pound SQL pass. Uh, next up, please stay on for SQL Server Internals, the practical angle, a sneak peek by Dmitry Karachikovich.